Knights and necromancers, drakes, dogs and dragons, giants, golems and grave wardens, samurai, snake balls and scourge beasts, basilisks, bloodluckers and brain suckers. The Souls games and Bloodborne, Sekiro and Elden Ring are filled to the bloody brim with sick enemies of all shapes, sizes and colours, many of which are largely anthropomorphic while many others are anything but. I'm something of a mega fan of these games and as such have made a bunch of videos on their best and worst bosses and levels, but as far as the regular enemies go, I really haven't said all that much on the subject, but screw it, now's the time I think where I go through my personal picks for the best and worst enemies from every Soulsborne game and Sekiro. And because there are so many enemies to choose from, I'll also give an honourable mention for each category, because why the hell not? I'd love to dive straight in, but let's very quickly get a couple things out of the way first. As far as my picks for worst enemies go, I'm defining those as enemies that I least enjoy encountering, not what I think are the lamest enemies. I mean, those annoying blob things from Blacktown suck and are lame, but I don't hate them. Or say, the Cox from Sekiro aren't the most engaging entity in that game, but I don't hate Cox or anything, quite the opposite in fact. Thus, rather than me picking enemies like that, I'll be focusing on the ones that make me go, oh god, not one of these things. Secondly, bosses, mini bosses and enemy phantoms are excluded from the list, so nothing like the lightning worm from Dark Souls 3 or say Maldron the Assassin from Dark Souls 2, for example. Though enemies that you do fight as a boss, but which later become regular field enemies, are on the table. And that's about all I want to clear up. If you like the video, hey why not subscribe to the channel? I make fun videos about great games. And before I get stuck right in, please allow me to give a massive thanks to my brilliant patrons for supporting the channel. Now, let's do this. Demon's Souls was of course the progenitor of all things Souls, giving the world its first taste of that delicious, deliberate style of combat that we'd come to and continue to adore for many years afterwards. Sure, compared to your Dark Souls 3s and your Elden Rings, the general combat might not feel quite as slick and sexy, but it still feels great and very impactful. A great aspect of Demon's Souls is that all five of its worlds feature completely unique enemies which match the theme of that world, requiring very different strategies for defeat. You'll get by just fine slashing at dreglings with any old weapon back in Boletaria, but try the same tactics with the old miners in Stonefang Tunnels and you're in for a rude awakening, bucko. One of the very few enemies that does actually appear in more than one world however, and my pick for best Demon's Souls enemy, is the Fat Official. Even though these rotund rascals are most associated with Boletaria being in part responsible for its downfall as far as the story is concerned, the first place most players are likely to see them is in the opening level of Stonefang Tunnel where you can find a total of three of them, armed with cruel whips and being capable of using the flame toss and ignite spells for massive damage, making early encounters with these fat fiends feel very perilous because you know that they can throw out that fire at any moment and kill you on this spot, meaning you really need to pick your moments for attack wisely. Of course, you do later encounter fat officials in Boletaria too, one of whom makes a brief appearance in the Tower Knight cutscene, though they'll also appear as actual enemies afterwards in the inner ward level, except armed with much more damaging crescent axes, again making for very dangerous opponents, especially if you've been a naughty boy and have pure black world tendency. Well, there goes all my health. Though there's always this one in the last level of Boataria who for some reason just lets himself be burned to death by the blue dragon. I never quite know whether to feel intimidated or bemused when this happens. Even aside from their fighting style though, the fat officials simply have a lot of personality, effectively acting as trolls to taunt you in your efforts to progress ever further into Boataria, at least before that really annoying one gets his comeuppance just prior to the penetrator fight. For my honourable mention, I'm picking the Red Eyed Knights, though to be honest I came really close to choosing these guys as my favourite. They are the toughest knights in Demon's Souls and even though I'd go on to fight much harder enemies and bosses in FromSoft's later games, I still get intimidated when I see one or indeed three of these red eyed pricks coming my way, especially if I make a wrong turn in the very first level of the game and get mercilessly nailed by the one guarding the mausoleum. I'll tell you an enemy I really don't want to see when I turn round a corner though and that's a bear bug, particularly the giant bear bugs. 
I indicated in the intro that my primary criteria for selecting the worst enemies were the extent to which they made me sigh, roll my eyes and or kick my legs in frustration and displeasure whenever I see them. And yep, that's how these enormous rock hard creatures always make me feel. Thankfully, they only appear in Stonefang Tunnel, but when you find them, they'll usually be situated so as to block important exits or entrances, basically requiring that you kill them to move on. The issue is that they have a metric crap ton of HP and 10 metric crap tons of defense, meaning that actually defeating them is both a chore and a bore, to the extent that it makes me snore, and I'll say no more. Now, if you're a magic user or have an enchanted weapon, then it's a very different story, which is actually the case for all of Stonefang Tunnel, really. But if not, have fun just whacking these things for an eternity until they die peacefully, and then let off a freaking nuclear explosion just as you're celebrating their demise. Not a difficult enemy in the slightest, and not really that dangerous apart from their death explosion, but just unpleasant to encounter and to fight. My dishonourable mention for worst enemy in Demon Souls, however, goes to the dogs. These things also appear in Stonefang Tunnel and Boataria, and while they don't take remotely as long to kill as the bear bugs, some of my most frustrating moments in this game have been at the hands, or should I say paws, of these mangy mutts. They give you no respite, they attack in packs, and it's very difficult to regain control of the situation once they've got you on the defensive. I'm not saying they're the hardest enemy in the game or anything, but they're just really annoying, even more so than in FromSoft's other games, and that's really saying something. Oh my god, ugh! This was tough. Dark Souls has a lot of awesome enemies that are both a pleasure to behold and fight. I considered picking the Balder Knights because of those great early memories I have of struggling in the Undead Parish, or the Dark Wraiths because of their graceful near dance like moveset and murky morbid design, but in the end, come on, my pick was inevitable. It goes to the Black Knights. One of the most consistently dangerous enemies in the game, appearing all throughout your journey, though who can forget that very first encounter in the Undead Burg, when you take a wee look-see down these steps to see if there's maybe a cool new weapon or shortcut to be discovered, only to find this dark, looming figure standing further within the tunnel, who is a good four foot taller than you, and is wielding a wicked, ornate straight sword and shield of iron charred black by the flames of chaos. Most players are likely to get utterly flattened by these things if they even dare take them on in the first place here, but of course they come in even more variants for you to take on as you get bolder and stronger. There's also the Greatsword variant, the Great Axe variant and the Halberd variant, all with differently awesome movesets, with all four appearing as respawning enemies in the Kiln of the First Flame. While Black Knights can be tough, especially early on, the more you fight them, the more you realise that they're not as bad as they first seem, especially if you start pulling out the parries, because near all their attacks are slow and well telegraphed, making encounters with them feel satisfyingly risky and meaningful. Really one of the most legendary enemies in the whole Dark Souls trilogy, and I was very glad when they brought them back for Dark Souls 3 too. My honourable mention goes to something completely different, that being the Stone Guardians of the Royal Woods found in the DLC. Dark Souls does a lot of things extremely well, obviously, but out of all the other FromSoft games, I think it nails a sense of heaviness the best, featuring big, chunky, weighty enemies that shake the ground with their attacks, and the Stone Guardians exhibit this quality better than nearly any other enemy in the game, though let me also give a quick shout out to the Berenique Knights. The first time I saw a Stone Guardian slam its axe into the ground and then heave it back up, bringing a chunk of the ground up with it was so awesome, and I love the way these things just prowl around the woods looking for invaders, and how you can find all four parts of their armour set if you explore thoroughly. I even got lucky with a Stone Great Axe drop on my most recent playthrough, now I too can be a Stone Guardian, except smaller. Ugh, I hate to be a bore, I hate to be a predictable old bitch. But my pick for worst Dark Souls enemy is the Bone Wheels. Cool design for an enemy, and I also like how you only find them lurking down in the darkness of the catacombs and in the depths of the painted world, but my god are they unpleasant as hell to fight. One Bone Wheel can be a serious pain to contend with if it gets you at a bad angle at the wrong moment, but the game very rarely throws just one at you at a time. It throws many, and when you have several of them coming at you from different sides, it's usually a death sentence unless you are extremely nimble with your dodge rolling. 
They do insane damage, they can stun lock you, they gank you, they're very mobile, and once again, they do insane damage. Even despite how many times I've beaten Dark Souls, I'm still vulnerable to getting tilted at these bone wheel bitches, because regardless of whether you try and book it past them or stay and fight, it's always extremely dangerous in a way that feels really cheap, in the same infuriating way as when your health bar gets deleted by a torch hollow, it just doesn't feel clean or just. As for my dishonourable mention, even though I just gave them a shout out, kinda, it's not the torch hollows, but rather I'm going with the blow dart snipers from Blight Town. Toxic is absolutely brutal in Dark Souls, to the extent that if you get hit with it, unless you've got some spare blooming purple moss clumps, it's a death sentence, meaning you either need to run back to the bonfire or say screw it, I'm going to soldier on and chuck my essence down to the last drop and hope to god there's a bonfire or shortcut or something ahead, please. Now, I don't dislike Toxic on a fundamental level or anything. This is supposed to be a hard game, so it's okay for it to get a bit nasty sometimes. And as I mentioned, if you thought ahead to farm some moss in Darkfruit Garden, then you'll be okay. But it's the sickening silent ease with which the snipers hit you. The darts make little to no noise, they're really difficult to see, and it can be difficult to tell where or indeed what they're coming from, especially for a new player who might have no understanding of why their health is suddenly getting eaten away even though there's no enemies in the immediate vicinity. What makes it really annoying is that the vast majority of the time, just a single dart is all it takes. I guess if you've been levelling up your resistance stat, you stand more of a chance of tanking a hit, but let's not get silly now. Who the hell's levelling up resistance? Not me, that's who. Dark Souls 2 may not be as revered as the rest of FromSoft's modern catalogue of games, but even so, I've had a ton of fun with it over the years, and a ton of fun with lots of its enemies. One thing people did rag on the game for back in the day was how many dudes in armour it throws at you, especially with its boss fights, but meh. I happen to think that dudes in armour tend to make for some of the most engaging and interesting enemies in these games, and so there were a good few candidates from Dark Souls 2 that I had in mind for my best pick, but what I've went for is the old knights found in Hyde's Tower of Flame. Even though it's far from perfect, the Tower of Flame happens to be one of my all time favourite Soulsborne levels. It's not the biggest or the most complex, but god damn it looks nice. It features a couple of simple but enjoyable boss fights, and it's the only place in the game which features the old knights. There are a few different variants of them encountered here. The sword and shield variant, the hammer variant, and the greatsword variant. Even though it's accessible from very early on from Majua, the Tower of Flame can make for a pretty difficult level, and these old boys are a big reason for that. They hit hard with their combos, sometimes throwing in an extra fourth hit at the end just when you think you've got them figured out. Though another aspect that makes them particularly difficult for a starting character is the extent to which their attacks track the player's movements, meaning that if you venture here with low ADP, you're probably going to get tagged with a lot of attacks that it kind of looked like you dodged. The Ultra Greatsword one in particular always catches me out, its overhead sword slam has deceptively long range. I guess I could have gone for a slightly more exotic enemy for my pick here, like the Hyde Knights, which are also found in the Tower of Flame, at least in the score of the first Sin edition, but I honestly much prefer these towering old warriors with their crumbling weaponry, and that last part is literally true as well. Their weapons and armour set have really low durability if you want to use them for yourself. Also, although they are technically a different enemy, I have to mention the Drake Keepers up in the Dragon Shrine, whose movements and movesets are based on the old knights, except with different weapons and armour. Though, like I said, my pick goes to the OGs, please. And my honourable mention goes to the Primal Knights. Not so much a dude in armour here, but rather a literal Mastodon in armour. Really not a common enemy at all, but you will find a couple of stone ones on the stairs up to Drang Lake Castle, which come to life when you get near, and there's also one at the start of the Doors of Pharos. Look, there's really nothing all that complex or technical about the Primal Knights, they just look really, really sick and imposing. You can get their weapons and shields for yourself of course, but just as is always the case in FromSoft's games, equipment scales up and down in size depending on which entity is wielding it, and so it looks uniquely grand and chunky in the hands of these towering tusked tyrants. For almost all the games on my list, I didn't know what my choices would be beforehand. 
I prepared a list of every enemy from each game and looked at them to think about which I liked best and which I liked least. But for Dark Souls 2, I always knew exactly who I'd be picking, and that is the mannequins from Earth and Peak. I detest these things. They have all bases covered when it comes to being a versatile pain in the anus. They can fire poison arrows from long range, throw poison knives from moderate range, and at close range can hit you with a borderline broken 5 hit knife combo, which on top of dealing massive damage and having a high likelihood to stun lock you, also causes bleed buildup for even more damage. Plus, their placement throughout the mid portion of Earthen Peak is infuriating, as if they've been situated so as to cause maximum possible levels of irritation, damage and death. It's funny too because historically I've never really regarded the mannequins as being all that problematic for me, but the last time I played through Earth and Peak I was tearing my goddamn hair out with these things. It's not that they're difficult, it's that everything about them is really, really annoying. My dishonourable mention for worst enemy in Dark Souls 2 is the Falconers, both the ones with falcons and the things betwixt on New Game Plus and the archers found in the Shaded Woods and Brightstone Cove Seldora. Holy shit, are these guys terrible. For a start, how about that damn running animation? It's not just ugly, it's flat out broken. Clearly, why is this in the game? And then there's a the ranged falcon attack, which is also scuffed in that even though the bird returns back to their arm afterwards, they'll only ever use the attack once, presumably not by design, but because again, the shit's broken. Furthermore, even their arrow attack is all weird. They're supposed to have the unique ability to fire two arrows from their bow in rapid succession, or at least I think they're supposed to. But depending on what frame rate you're playing on, you're most likely to only see a single arrow come out even though the sound effect for two arrows plays. Whereas I consider the mannequins to be extremely obnoxious and unpleasant to fight, the falconers are extremely broken and shit. And if you want to know even more about these dudes, I'd encourage you to check out Limit Breaker's awesome video on them from a couple of years back, which I'll link in the description. But for now, on to Dark Souls 3. I guess it's kinda redundant to say when we're talking about these games, but once again, very tough for me to pick favourites here. Dark Souls 3 has several awesome armoured enemies and a few brilliant monster varieties too, but my pick for best enemy goes to the Cathedral Knights. The very first encounter with one of these formidable foes is a particularly memorable one, because it's set up in a way where you're more likely to hear it before you see it, its heavy footsteps resounding around the chapel below, in a level which has, up until this point, largely been populated by robed deacons, thralls and giants, but then you come up against this absolute unit in ultra heavy armour armed with a giant mace and great shield, and this really is one of the sickest armour sets in the game. I think it's the Great Helm in particular that really completes the ensemble, making them appear that extra bit inscrutable and imposing. And I may be wrong here, but I'm pretty sure the only other enemy from the Dark Souls trilogy who wears a Great Helm of this sort is the Hyde Knights from Dark Souls 2. The Cathedral Knights, however, are found in the Cathedral of the Deep, and again later on in the Consumed King's Garden where they are substantially stronger though still armed with either a Mace and Great Shield or Cathedral Great Sword. Regardless of which weapon they're found wielding, they make for really powerful enemies with massive sweeps and slams, some things with exaggerated stomps and charges to get your panic rolling, and the mace wielding ones can even activate a blessed buff, leaving holy mines on the ground after each attack which deal magic damage after a 4 second timer. For my honourable mention, although there were several other incredible armoured enemies to choose from, like the Ringed Knights or the Millwood Knights, I'm going to go with a monster with the gargoyles to be specific. As with several enemies on my list, it also has its variants. For a start, the ones in the profaned capital do not have a head, though way up on the rooftops of the Grand Archives you can find several who do, appearing as large grinning skulls, though in either case the gargoyles always either wield a flame hammer or flame spear. Obviously the designs of the gargoyles and black blade kindred from Elden Ring would be quite heavily based off of these stone monstrosities, but I honestly prefer the Dark Souls 3 design. I love how the headless ones still make those low pitched roars and growls, even though they don't have a visible mouth, and they've got some killer attacks, flying around the area and thrusting down from above with a massive spear, or bathing the area in profaned flames with a huge hammer, and that was not intended to be a euphemism by the way. As for the worst, well there's not really any enemies I flat out dislike in Dark Souls 3. 
In fact, I can't think of any that I consider truly shit or extremely annoying. The one that springs to mind, or should I say spins to mind, are the Hollow Clerics from the Ringed City DLC. Both the Dreg Heap and the Ringed City are crawling with some of the toughest enemies in the game, to be sure. But then you've also got these weird clerics who carry massive stones on their back, forcing them to move around on all fours like some beast, though also giving them a means of protection where they can become almost immune to damage whilst casting an AoE attack, forcing you to either wait until it's over or, if you know the strats, they can be kicked or magicked from this position to topple them over. You'll know when one's in the vicinity too because they can summon damaging yellow emblems to appear beneath your feet, forcing you to keep moving until you find its source, especially problematic if you've got other stronger enemies also in the area. Honestly, really not a bad enemy, but if I've got to pick something for worst, I guess I'm picking these guys for want of a better option. And my dishonourable mention goes to the lycanthrope hunters of the Crucifixion Woods. If there's one thing I've never been much of a fan of, particularly in the later Soulsborne games, it's levels which feature a lot of weaker enemies, rather than fewer stronger ones. If I beat a powerful enemy, I tend to feel pretty good about it, especially if it's up there in quality with some of the excellent enemies already mentioned throughout this video. But if you spread that threat out more thinly throughout the level, so that near everywhere I go there are entities to watch out for which can damage me, but which aren't all that challenging to beat, then for me, most of the time, the sum of my gr gratification, for want of a better term, is less than it would be compared to the former scenario, and this is the case with this section of the Crucifixion Woods. There are loads of these guys, and they're not that fun to fight, instead being more on the annoying side of the spectrum. Their design is cool, but when I see half a dozen lycanthrope hunters shambling around here, I more feel the urge to just go around them rather than to engage with them, in much the same way as when Elden Ring throws a legion of putrid corpses my way. They function more as environmental hazards rather than interesting enemies. Again, not really a bad enemy, but if I must dishonourably mention something, I'm dishonourably mentioning these guys with the big sticks. By the way, I realise that my mentions are more turning into discussions that are going on for longer than my actual picks, but, you know, who cares. Aha, and now we arrive beyond souls but all we've got left is Sekiro, Elden Ring, and my personal favourite, Bloodborne. There's a whole lot of different enemy designs in Bloodborne, especially when you take the Chalice Dungeons into account, which introduced a lot of stuff not found anywhere in the base game. And furthermore, due to Bloodborne being a gothic Lovecraftian horror game, rather than a dark fantasy banger like the Souls games, there tends to be a lot more variance between one enemy design and the next. As for my pick though, well, both my favourite and honourable mention are from the incredible Old Hunters DLC, starting with the titular Old Hunters. You can access the DLC content fairly early on in the game, right after beating Vicar Amelia in fact, though as you'll soon find out upon actually entering into the Hunter's Nightmare, it ain't no walk in the park, because the very first enemy you encounter after leaving the Nightmare version of Odin Chapel is an Old Hunter, armed with a Beast Cutter and Blunderbuss. Now, prior to the DLC, this game already featured a lot of encounters with enemy hunters who had lost their minds to the point of frenzy, but their appearances, movements and movesets were all exactly in line with what you as a player could pull off. With the old hunters though, that is not the case. They're bigger, louder and way more dangerous. A third of the time you see them in this level, they're not even attacking you at first, but rather are prowling around the nightmare, looking for more beasts to slaughter with their crude, inelegant weaponry and antiquated garb, sporting brutal weapons like the Beast Cutter, Beast Hunter Safe, and the ever-explosive Boom Hammer. Boom goes the dynamite. These enemies are what the base game hunter fights should have been, and for me are a big part of what makes the DLC so outstanding. This is Bloodborne though, and so I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about something more monstrous too, which brings me to my honourable mention, the giant fishmen of the fishing hamlet. I know a lot of people probably hate these abominations, which I do understand because, let's face it, they're both terrifying and very challenging, but despite how many times I've gotten obliterated by their massive shark attacks with the exaggerated shark wind-ups and absurd shark range, I love these things in a weird way a weird twisted way. 
In fact, I think they are one of FromSoft's best and most intimidating enemy designs, both the anchor wielding and unarmed varieties. My pick for worst Bloodborne enemy actually goes to another creature found in the DLC, though you can find a somewhat less unpleasant variant of them over at Kanehurst 2. It is the Bloodluckers. The main reason I've chosen these grotesque bloated pests is that they are situated in the river of blood section of the Hunter's Nightmare in a way where I never feel the desire to actually fight them. I've tried a bunch of times but I've always found them to be unreasonably difficult to beat in a way that just doesn't feel right. I don't really have a problem with the ones at Kanehurst, but I don't think I've ever managed to clear out these ones here. There's too many and I would need to pull off some tedious bait tactics to take them all out, whereas it's easier to just not fight them at all, which in my book doesn't make for a fun enemy. Or maybe I just really really suck at Bloodborne, you be the judge. And for my dishonourable mention, I am choosing the Children of Rom, otherwise known as those annoying fucking spider things that can one-shot you out of nowhere. I'm not too sure if it's entirely sporting to put these little guys here because they do almost exclusively appear as part of Rom boss fights, either on the Moonside Lake or in the Chalice Dungeon, but they themselves really can't be considered bosses, and also apparently they can even appear as regular mobs in Root Chalice Dungeons. And also they're not my main pick anyway, so if you can just calm down. Regardless of where you find them, they make for very unpleasant enemies. Like Rom, their heads are highly resistant to damage, meaning that the only viable way to kill them is to attack from behind or from the sides, which is a bit annoying when there's a bunch of them, though the main source of pain with these enemies isn't their hard-headed nature, but the outrageous damage they do with their attacks. It's too much. They're more dangerous than Rom, for God's sake, and just like with the aforementioned bone wheels and torch holes from Dark Souls 1, the damage they inflict does not feel proportionate to the actual animation, making it feel that extra bit frustrating when they do cause your downfall. Sekiro may indeed be the main outlier here in terms of its gameplay and semi-realistic setting when compared to the other six games on this list, but one quality that it absolutely shares with the rest of them is that it features a lot of awesome, challenging enemies. Of course, the absolute best opponents in Sekiro are both the bosses and mini-bosses, with their extensive, complex and intricate movesets for you to gradually learn that bit more with every subsequent death. But there are a bunch of regular enemies that I love fighting too, and chief among them are the fencers at the top of Ashina Castle. You probably thought I was going to say the Mist Noble or something, didn't you? And then we'd all laugh at the absurdity of it, ha ha ha, no. I don't make jokes, I'm as serious as a heart attack. Ashina Castle is pretty much my favourite overall level in Sekiro, both the outdoor rooftop section and the interior, but a big part of that is these guys. When I first infiltrated the castle and saw them slowly walking around with their distinctive garb and hairstyle, I knew I was going to be in for a formidable challenge, and indeed, they boast some of the most impressive swordplay in the game. They're not the fastest, or the most aggressive, or the most extravagant, but there's an elegant threat to the way they move, with them of course being practitioners of the Ashina arts, as developed by the sword saint himself, Ishin Ashina. They can even use attacks that you yourself can learn from the Ashina esoteric text, like Ichimonji. Sekiro does have plenty more outlandish enemies throughout its large and varied levels, but for me, where it's at its best is when you're fighting some tough samurai with a sword and with a cool haircut. My honorable mention goes to the Akami Warriors of Fountainhead Palace. Of course, there are different variants of these warrior women too, with the archers being somewhat weaker than the sword and naginata wielding types, but regardless of their weapon of choice, the Akame both move and fight with a uniquely fluid, dance-like motion, in stark contrast to the more no-nonsense style used by the aforementioned fencers. This aspect can make their attacks quite tricky to deflect at first, though once you get their bouncing rhythm down it's not so bad, especially if you manage to pull off a few well-timed reversals to their lightning attacks. Not only are they enjoyable and interesting to fight though, but just like I said with the fat officials from Demon Souls, the Akami have a lot of personality, albeit a different kind of personality in this case. In some places, you can watch them frolic around with one another, and it makes for some pretty touching scenes. And of course you go down and slaughter them all mercilessly. 
While I certainly consider the inhabitants of Fountainhead Palace to be enchanting, dexterous and graceful, the same cannot be said for the denizens of the squalid settlement lying directly below it, Mibu Village. Mibu Village is actually one of my least favourite levels in Sekiro, not because I dislike it structurally or thematically, because I actually think it's really great in both those regards, but because of the enemies. For a start, there's tons of them. Also, there's almost no point in actually killing them because they'll just respawn afterwards due to their consumption of the rejuvenating sediment found in their village waters, and on top of that, even if they did not respawn, I'd probably still not want to fight them all that much anyway, because at the end of the day they're just lame little dudes carrying lamps, gourds and farm equipment. And to be fair, that's the idea, it's to express that the inhabitants of Mibu Village have gone mad and transformed, which is great, but they're not great to actually fight. Mind you, in the event that one of them actually does manage to get you, the outcome is surprisingly brutal. And now for my dishonourable mention, that being the rifle-wielding gunners of the Sunken Valley. For as rather good as it looks, I've also never been a big fan of actually moving through the Sunken Valley, because it is lousy with these eagle-eyed gunners, spotting you from afar and then harrying you with rifle fire, forcing you to scramble to safety. Obviously the idea is that you should get by them with stealth, but more often than not I get spotted because they tend to have excellent vantage points throughout the level, and furthermore, once you do get up close to them, they're one of those enemies that can just be easily beaten by spamming the R1 button, meaning I feel less incentivized to actually evade them cleverly with stealth, and would much rather just mess away run up to where they are to take them out and move on through the level. Sekiro really doesn't have any straight up bad enemies, but like the Mibu villagers, I just don't like fighting these gunners. And now we come to the biggest, grandest and most golden game of them all, Elden Ring. A game boasting an extensive list of interesting and formidable knights, monsters and wildlife there to make the player's journey through the lands between that bit more perilous. For my pick for best enemy though, well it's actually sort of a cross between a human and a monster. It is the omens. The first time most players are likely to encounter an omen will be in that absurdly well guarded and hectic part of Stormvale Castle, where you can see one of them situated at the back, and you might even have an idea in your head of how this thing's going to fight once you engage it based on its appearance, presumably involving sequences of brutal stomps and savage animalistic sword swipes. But in actuality, omens have one of the most graceful fighting styles in the game. You'll encounter far more of them as you progress through the game of course, but where their presence is at its most dense is in the subterranean shunning grounds, which effectively serves as their home, a place where royal omens are banished to, out of sight of normal people and cut off from the grace of the earth tree. Of course, despite the unexpected grace of their general fighting style, they do still have some more brutal attacks at their disposal, like that horrible running bear hug. Oh, sorry, wrong enemy which is designed to get you panic rolling before catching you at the end, but their long exhausting combos can be really difficult to deal with, making you think they're over before out comes another slash or kick. The most challenging omens of all though, excluding the likes of say Morgoth and Moog of course, are those special ones which still have all their horns intact, being way more buff and having the ability to let off dark, wraith explosions of black and gold, much like the player can perform with the regal omen beard item. Awesome enemy type whose presence is enhanced by their tragic backstory, being forced to lead cursed, isolated lives just because of the way they were born. My honourable mention goes to an enemy that I imagine most people would probably not expect, that being the Rotten Duelist. You can find both regular and rotten duelists in various parts of the lands between, both as bosses and regular enemies, though my favourite is this one here, standing just by ordinate liturgical town in the consecrated snowfields. Duelists are already extremely sick and brutal looking enemies, having a uniquely gladiatorial appearance and fighting style, complemented by numerous wicked scars across their grey flesh, but the rotten ones are so much sicker, literally. Their equipment and weaponry is much the same in style as the regular ones, with that distinctive helm still boasting its snake design, but this variant has that scarlet tinge to their weapon, armour and even flesh, giving them a distinctly rotten, rusted look, causing scarlet rot build up on the player with each attack. Really not a common enemy at all, but I think they're really, 
really cool and quite underrated. My pick for worst enemy in the game is a very, very scary enemy indeed. I hate them. It's the Royal Revenants. Awesome design for an enemy, sure. Super disturbing and jarring, yes, but oof. Please pardon my language here, but jeez louise. Actually fighting them is a horrible, hectic nightmare. It does not matter how many hours I put into Elden Ring, my level of skill always devolves down to a state of frantic button mashing when a Royal Revenant is in the middle of another relentless assault where I just can't seem to not get hit, only for them to sink into the ground and then materialise elsewhere, spray me with poison and leap on me again. I know there is a hidden strat where they're very weak to healing incantations, which is a really cool feature, but this is the kind of thing you either need to discover by accident or hear about online, and also what happens if you're not running a faith build and or don't happen to have a healing incantation equipped. Elden Ring features all manner of really difficult enemies who I still enjoy fighting even though they're challenging as hell. It's one of the main reasons we play these games for god's sake, to be challenged, but Royal Revenants are on a different level for me where I hate seeing them and I hate fighting them. As for my dishonourable mention, my final mention, it happens to be another disgusting enemy type. It's the Kindred of Rot. My first encounter with these pests was where I imagine most players first encounter took place, inside Celia Crystal Tunnel after you are warped there by that damn chest in the Dragon Burnt Ruins on Lake Agil in Limgrave. Then you see the semi-crystallised miners toiling away for Glintstone, and you think, hmm, I'd best watch out for them before getting ravaged out of nowhere by one of the most annoying attacks in the game, Pest Threads. I don't know what it is about this attack, but I've never been able to figure out exactly how to avoid it. It tracks your movements incredibly well. You do see the Kindred of Rot in loads of places other than here, of course, particularly when there's a profound Scarlet Rot presence, but they're simply not an enemy I enjoy fighting. They really ain't too bad up close, but they're a big pain in the arse at range, and they look and sound disgusting too. I mean, literally every enemy I've listed here from Elden Ring looks disgusting in some way, but the Kindred of Rot look really disgusting. Where's my bug spray? And there you have it folks, there is my list. With these pretty much being some of the best games ever made, in some cases there weren't really any truly bad enemies to choose from, and so I just have to choose the ones I liked least. Let me know what your picks are down in the comments, I'll make for a fun old read, we can all argue and get mad at each other for having different opinions. Please allow me to give another massive thank you to my awesome patrons for supporting the channel, and on that note, cheers for watching and cheerio.